Hello YouTube, WJ Sandy Dad here, and today we're going to do another unboxing. Now I've gotten interested in getting better at soldering. I've always soldered with something like this, and I mean I do okay. Certainly when it comes to soldering, just wire to wire. But uh, you know, I want to learn how to do the circuit boards better, particularly like the uh, speedometer type circuit boards. You know, your vehicles get older and those solder joints start to fail and then your speedometer doesn't work or your tack doesn't work or whatever. So uh, really to do those right, I think you need something like this. So, let's see what's in this box here. Uh, lots of different tips. These are the uh, heat gun ones, which is here. And, uh, you know, basically this blows hot air. Kind of like me sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's probably a little bit better for the circuit boards. I'm not likely to burn it up as much compared to using the soldering iron. If you keep it on there too long, obviously you can damage things. So let's see what sort of goodies are in here. The soldering tips, got some tweezers. Those are sometimes useful for grabbing things that you're soldering. Give us some solder here, probably flux, calling it soldering paste. My guess is it's just flux. I'll see what it says in the instructions. This is the solder station itself. Eight sixty two D. I couldn't remember honestly which model I bought. I basically just got on and searched and searched and searched and tried to find the best bang for the buck, and this seemed to be it. And the reviews were pretty good. solder stand that probably goes for the heat gun something I don't normally do I'm gonna read this over before I go any farther and uh, make sure there's nothing that I need to do other than prime in the soldering tip I have determined that that's gonna mount right there so then that, that holds that the soldering iron just sits in the stand like that, so when it's hot, you obviously less likely to be able to burn yourself on it. So there it is, and uh, no, I did not build that shelf custom for this, but it almost looks like I did, because you see there's just the perfect amount of clearance there for me to be able to grab this if I need to. And uh, I'll have to see, since I generally keep these batteries above there, if this thing's generating a lot of heat. Obviously, you don't want a lot of heat with a battery. But you see, I tend to, when I'm working on my projects, I have either 6 volt or 12 volt batteries. And uh, I use those to test out lights or whatever. I'm working on it so I need to see how to put the tip on the blower there the soldering iron already has a tip on it and uh, we'll fire this thing up and see how it works so this is actually really low tech they just slip over that and each of them has a screw with a lock nut so 
So basically just like that. I mean, it could be a simpler design. So they give you four different tips and at least they give four different screws and lock nuts so you're not having to completely transfer it because if you saw that it was kind of a pain in the butt to install it the first time. So switching them out, you just loosen that up. Slide the new one on. So one complaint I would point out right off the bat is they give you that square lock nut, but it doesn't secure itself to anything. So you have to hold it while turning. Now it does seem that you know, finger tight like that is enough to hold it securely. But it's interesting. I would have thought with a square nut like that that it would fit into some sort of recession and hold itself. So you just have to basically turn with a screwdriver. But here you're going to have to hold. And obviously, if you've been using this, this part here is probably extremely hot. So you can't do what I'm doing here. You'll burn yourself really badly. I think I'm going to start with that tip size as my default. That obviously is a wider and that's going to be a really concentrated spot probably similar to just using a soldering iron. So I'm going to keep these handy though for when I need them. The other thing this may be useful for is heating up the shrink wrap tubing when you are done soldering. I have found a new way to shrink because I've always just done it with a cigarette lighter. So I paid for this myself. This is not sponsored or anything, but this is the brand that I got. I'm guessing that's Bacon Ing or one of my favorite foods. We'll call it Bacon G. But uh, it says the 862D model and just looking in their specifications of the different models that they have the 862 is in this column here so all of those are the same and over here you see that this model does the the best if you want to call it that you know higher temperature ranges and then on here there's different explanations as to what it does like I said, it seems like it's pretty well loaded for what they offer as far as all models and uh, like I said I thought it was a pretty good price so you turn on the air and then uh, this is the air flow and the temperature is over here so see you can put it as low as 100 degrees and as high as 480. And it probably is blowing 162 degree air. I'm putting my hand in front of it and not getting burned. So the auto and manual switch is actually kind of cool. When you have it on auto, you see even though I have the air on, it's not blowing and it's not heating. I'm not going to touch it because it's probably still hot from using it earlier. When you switch it to manual, it just constantly blows heat no matter what you're doing. So I guess the theory would be you put it on manual if you're using it a lot and just setting it down temporarily. whereas the auto when it's sitting in the holder there it's not running so but it'll start you see when I pick it up and then it shuts down when I put it back in there now it does run for a second while it's in there just to cool you see it rapidly cooling down and then goes into standby next we'll try the soldering iron and we set it over here so what temperature you want, again, between 100 and 480. And then 
it should actually show what the temperature of the soldering iron is as it warms up. So we'll get some flux here. And you see it's starting to warm up. When it's actually hot, usually that'll just sizzle right off. And I gave a paper thin sponge. I'm going to go wet it and I'll be right back. So there it is, wet it, thickened up a little bit. So when you get a new tip, you want to tin it a little bit. So that it doesn't corrode in between uses. I'm going to have to figure out how this works. Like when it's showing the actual temp versus what I'm shooting for. You see it heats up pretty quick. <laughs> so that was 30 degrees Celsius that quickly. And just to test this out, I'm just going to tin the end of this wire here just to see how well this works. So it should already be heated up. I put some flux on here. We're just going to heat the wire, and when you see it start to sizzle like that, touch your solder to it, and it should just pull into the wire. Sometimes you need to touch it kind of between the iron and the wire to uh, help bridge the temperature there. So I'm going to let that cool and I'm going to see how well the hot air works for shrink tubing it. Okay, that's cool to the touch. Just put a little piece of shrink tubing over here and I'm purposely not covering the end because I want to use this wire for something and if the end is covered I won't obviously be able to use it. So this is set at 162. We'll see if that's enough to shrink. And it did it. I think I did a little too big of a shrink tube. But you get that general idea. <laughs> did way too big of a shrink tube but it did shrink down so we know that system will work so I'm excited got a new way to do soldering and uh, looking forward to using this in some of my future projects so post comments below if you got questions about this unit I'll answer them for you I'll put a link heightened by your own I want to say it was under $75 to buy it and uh, you know, also I'll let you know how it holds up long term. What I found with soldering irons in general is taking care of the soldering iron tip is crucial. If it starts getting all corroded then it doesn't transfer heat well and it's amazing just you have a soldering iron that you're literally holding on a wire and it's not heating up enough to melt the solder and then you just clean it and all of a sudden put it on there sizzles right away boom solder so taking care of the tip is really important with a soldering iron 
as far as this unit in general, I don't know what special care it's going to require. Uh, the owner's manual is certainly not thorough, but uh, it does have a few pointers in here about replacing parts and so forth. So uh, hopefully that's not going to be a frequent occurrence, but we will see. And I'll let you know. Anyway, appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And please tell your friends about my channel. Thank you very much.